today I'm going to show you a little tutorial video on how to sign up your kids for YouTube Kids. So what's kind of nice about this, and I'm relatively new to it, so there might be more benefits, uh, but as far as I know, it limits the type of content that they're exposed to to make sure that they're only watching uh, age-appropriate videos, right? Um, so here at the bottom of my video that I just posted, if you go to the comment section right below, it'll say try YouTube kids. If you click on any of the videos that I've posted, you should be able to find that at the bottom. Um, so what I did is I just clicked on it where it says learn more. And it took me to this fun little short clip where you select now. <laughs> my computer is set for Spanish, so this is in Spanish, but yours might pop up in English. Just make sure you um, click on the button that says that you are the parent. Okay. Even though you're setting up an account for your child, you still have to go in as a parent in order to do so. Okay. So make sure you click I am the parent. And I'm clicking on that button um, that's marked in Spanish. And then I'm just going to click next or siguiente in Spanish. Um, and then it's going to ask you for your date of birth. All you need to put in is the year in which you were born. And the only reason why they ask you this is to make sure that the person really is an adult and is um, over 18 pretty much. You could make up a year. I'm going to make one up myself. Um, just make sure it's a year that makes you look like you're over 18. Okay. At this point, you're going to have this little tutorial video or introductory video, not really a tutorial. Um, I'll let you watch it once you sign up yourself and I'll just narrate a little bit more. Uh, it's really quite a short video. Again, an introduction. As soon as it's done, which will be in a few seconds, I can click on next. And voila. And in this case, because it's in Spanish, it just says siguiente, but it's like saying next. Now you're going to choose which account you're going to use. I'm automatically signed in with my LAUSD email. However, you um, need to make sure that you're not signed in with an email that you don't want to use. Um, maybe you don't want to use your work email, which might automatically put, uh, appear on there. Or if you do want a work email, but it automatically pops up with, you know, a personal one, make sure you change it. And all you got to do is just click on this little... Um, arrow right here in order to change it. It'll let you type it in or select from a list of emails that you already have registered on your computer. Because this is the email I want to use, I'm going to leave it on there and I'm going to put click on this word down here which means access. Okay. And then it's just going to ask me um, for my identification just type in my password, which you should already have if you have an email, right? Whatever password you have for your email, you're going to type it in on there. Click on next, the blue button that says next. And voila, now you're creating your child's profile. So through your own account, you create theirs. Um, I'm going to pretend I have a kid named Julia Roberts, but I'm not going to display any of her private information in public. So as you can tell, it just says to input their first name. So I'm just going to write Julia. And I'm going to pretend like little Julia is five years old. Uh, this is not information that's going to be displayed anywhere. However, it is important for um, YouTube to know more or less your child's age to determine the most appropriate videos for your child, right? So if I put that my kid is 16, um, they, there might be some videos that are appropriate for high schoolers, but not necessarily for kindergartners, okay? Um, that's why it's important to put the age and then the birth month. I'm just going to make up whatever birth month. I think you should be fine if you make up any birth month as well. Um, and let's see here. When you provide the month of birth, YouTube Kids will use this to more accurately provide an age-appropriate experience. So I'm guessing, you know, they can see that by uh, January of next year, you won't be five, Julia won't be five anymore, she'll be six, and maybe she'll be moved up a different category um, for kids six to nine, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's really not that big a deal. Oh, there we go, see? You have categories for ages four and under, 
4 to 7, and 8 to 12. Um, I guess those are the, the kid categories that they have, which means two years from now, your child will move up from the younger category to older kids category, um, therefore suggesting different types of videos, which are still age appropriate and should definitely be school appropriate, but just maybe a little bit more uh, in depth in terms of the content, right? A little bit less cartoons, maybe a little bit more real people in it. I'm not sure. Um, do you want search on or off? So this is so that your child can search for new videos that interest them for the millions of available in YouTube kids. Okay, when you turn it off, you're limiting your child to videos from a set of channels that have been already verified, that's really important, by YouTube kids. Your child cannot search for videos. So the big difference is, if you put this filter on, the one that we're about to choose, and it's up to you, um, every parent in this classroom might set it up differently, but if you put the search on, you're allowing your child to look up children's videos. So there's still children's videos and they're still approved, so that's still a good thing. Now if you put a uh, search off, they cannot play any videos that they look up. They can only look through a list of videos that are child friendly. Okay, so either option, all of the videos are going to be child friendly. Now you want to be able to choose whether you want your kids to look for videos or to only look at the videos that are already in the library. My personal suggestion is allow for the search button to be on because, for example, if they want to look up a video that I, Ms. Clark, created for the students, they might have to type it in. They might have to search it. It might not necessarily be um, in the library of videos. So my videos, you know, they're child-friendly and def um, age-appropriate, school-appropriate and everything, but I'm not 100% certain that it'll be in the library of videos that is provided to them. So just in case, I would um, click on turn search on. And then if you have any questions regarding that, feel free to contact me personally so we can further discuss. But I don't want to give that too much time here on the video. Um, uh, let's see. Go to edit profile to set up a secret code for Julia or your child. Um, this code prevents other kids on this same computer from accessing that profile. Uh, I'm assuming if we click on this little pencil here. Oh, no, that's just for editing. Nope, I don't want to go back. Let's see. Oh, I guess Julia's profile is created. She's a little giraffe. Um, if you have multiple kids in your household, if you have two or more, you might want to create a profile for each. I personally don't, I can't right off the top of my head think of as to why that would be necessary. I feel like they could both use the same account to look up videos. But if you want to separate, you know, your middle schooler or high schooler from your elementary child, in that case, you might want to have different accounts. That way, if something funky pops up, you know which child was searching it up. Um, but I'm just looking it up for Julia, so I'm going to go to next. Okay, and then here's a little tour of the different features you have available. You can look through that yourself. I'm just going to click on done. And there you are. Now, when you click on let's go, it's just going to show you your child's page, the videos that they recommend, and that your child has already seen. But that's pretty much it in terms of creating a child-friendly environment for your kid to explore through YouTube.